Let's Talk Books with indie author Cheyenne Warren. Hey, hey, y'all. What's up? So, today we are talking about chapter one, how's break going? Christmas is tomorrow. Are you working? Are you not working? Chapter two, book review with the fire on high. Another five star read. Chapter three, word count goals, outlines. Do you do them? I'll let you know what I do. And chapter four, plug my project. So if that interests you, you want to hear what's up, let's go. Chapter one, holiday hours. Okay, let's jump right into it. We're in Christmas break or holiday break. Are you working? I'm not working. I don't have to work. I'm planned out until the end of January. The Like, well, by the time this video goes up, I'll be planned out to like the mid-February. Y'all know I'll do my pre-prepping and pre-planning. If that's something that you're unfamiliar with and you're one of my teacher watchers, you can head over to misswarnsclass.com slash blog and I have a vlog up of prepping and planning and how I stay on top how I stay on top of things if you're not one of my teacher friends do you have the holidays off is it like Christmas and Christmas Eve before I was in the school system I worked in like group homes residential care there was no such thing as having holidays what actually holidays meant you get paid time and a half or double time depending on where I was at so I was like oh me 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 like, me, me, me. So, what's happening with y'all? Like, what are y'all doing for the holidays? My authors, are we writing? Are you keeping your writing schedule through the holidays? Am I? I should be. I do kind of. Most days I lay around and do nothing. I'm doing a lot of reading. I got um, my goal for this year, 75 books. I'm not going to complete it. But at the time that I did this video, I'm at 63. So I'm going to try to get as many in as I can. But I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to make the 75, though. It's okay, though. Last year, my goal was 60. And I was at 45, like, in November. And I was like, I need to make my goal. And I was like, I went hard. This year, I'm growing, y'all. I'm evolving as a person. It's okay if I don't make it. It's okay. And I'm not going to because I'm not going to get to 75 in three weeks. It's okay. Chapter two, with the fire on high. Chapter two, book review. With the fire on high. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Okay, so you guys know I always put it upon the screen. With the Fire on High is a five-star read. Now, every week, will I bring you five-star reads? No, I won't. Like, I'll mix it in a little. I know first I talked about Will Smith. That was a five-star read. And then we did Cinderella is Dead, which was a five-star read. And now it's with the Fire on High, which is also a five-star read. So I'm kind of giving you this, um, the feeling that, dang, Cheyenne, you give every book five-star. I don't. I don't. Like, you have to be diamond in the rough to get my five star. It just so happened that the three books that I was most excited to talk about for our book review have been five stars. So, spoiler alert, with the fire on high, it follows a teenage girl who just had a baby. She's in high school. She stayed in high school. Her grandma, they're um, Latina. Her grandma, who she lives with, um, is a very big part of her life, but is also really big on, I'm going to help you out, but you're the mama. Let's not forget, you're the mama, okay? And so that relationship is good. Her father, like, comes and goes, and that relationship is like, um, she calls him by his first name. So that gives you a kind of inkling what happens. And she's a great cook. What I'm saying, because, you know, I listen to books, y'all, but um, this book um, it's just I just so happened to have it in my library when the book club said that melanated girls read when the book club said that we're reading this book so I didn't have to like rush to let me go online I had it and so I listened and read at the same time 
and like the how the recipes and stuff is in there first of all the author is the one who read it so you have that that accent that flair and that made it lit okay so even if you don't like audios which i understand i'm no longer judging you out loud but if you don't like audios, try to read and listen at the same time because you really, really get the experience of her when you're here, you hear the author reading. The book follows her and she's cooking and then she gets into like, to this like elective cooking class and but like she can cook she knows that this flavor goes with this flavor and she starts adding stuff to the recipes and like yeah it's bomb but the teacher's like that's not what I told you to do you have to follow directions and so she kind of struggles with that and struggles and like so it goes through that she goes on this trip it's good y'all like it's good it's a YA it's a YA young adult book but it's good like I loved it I loved how mature being a mom made her and how she was aware that I have to be mature, but I'm still a kid though. And um, how she really shined in coming of age. She really shined and she really found her way. And you were like rooting for her during the book. But there's also people who you were like... But by the end of the book, you were like, okay... I, I, you can get you can't get a whole pass but i'll stop side eyeing you though so a half a pass i can give you a half a pass yeah a half a pass so that was good because there's some there's some characters that made it unpredictable there were some characters where i just knew that mm, okay oh she said something smart get her and it's like yeah we're adults that you shouldn't always have to like hop back mm, but sometimes you have to show people how they're gonna treat you like sometimes that's just the thing so with the fire on high bomb book y'all let me know in the comments have you read it or and all if you have let's talk about it. if not i don't know what you're doing but you need to get on it y'all if you don't read nothing else these books that i bring you every week you need to read them if you don't like reading, and reading that's your thing, and I mean, I couldn't imagine how you found me with reading not being your thing. But if that's the case, that means I have to convince you, okay, any book that I review during chapter two of any vlog, perfect place to start. Okay. Chapter three, word count, outline. Chapter three. Word counts. Do you have like a word count? Now I'm talking to my indie authors. That's what we do in chapter three. Do you have like word count goals per day or outlines? First of all, I am not the author who outlines. I'm not. I'm sorry. I just write. And, and as I'm writing, um, stuff just comes out. And um, I don't pre-plan. I always have in my, my files, I have, um, I use GoodNotes. I jot down like, ooh, like Nancy Drew, character, um, sisters, this place. And then it's just, I just take that and like, I just write. I, you know, guys, in my books, if you're new here, in my books, I have, um, the, the chapters are titled. And I will like know where exactly I want to go in a chapter, title it, write the chapter and go, eh. The title really doesn't fit with what I ended up writing and go back and change it. I don't really get writer's block. I get um, get up and do it block. I'm laying in the bed. This is a perfect time for me to get my word count done. But I'm laying in the bed though. So, but I should get up and go to the computer so I can get my word count done. But I'm laying in the bed. So once I start going, like I can go, get it done. But I have that, so it's not writer's block. It's like get up and do it block. That's what I have. Now, do I have my um, word count per day? So the site that I use or the program, whatever you want to say, that I use to write my stuff is called ReadZ. And um, I can set a goal. Cause So usually I um, talk to my editor and I'm like, okay, three or four months, 
what do you got? She says, hand it to me by this day. All right, bet. I go into Reezy. I go, I want this many words by this day. Um, and then it calculates how many you should do a day. I take off weekends because I don't write on weekends. I save weekends for content. And then it calculates out to tell me what do I have to do to stay on task. Do I always write how many words I say in the goal? No. The goal I always do is how many words it should be. Like for crime fiction, that should be like fifty to 75,000. I usually go high and do 75,000. Do I end up writing that much? Am I like always on the bubble? No. I have, I have, I have written six books. I have published five. And I have never done the projected amount of words the final time. I've never done that. So what do you guys do? Um, I'm curious. I know a lot of people outline and they're like, you don't have your plots and your subplots and you don't have all of that. I really don't. Like as I'm writing and I'm like, oh, maybe I should have her do this. Let me start writing that. And they're like, oh, no, I changed my mind. Ooh, like that's that, that's how I am. And I'm I'm blessed, I've noticed, that I don't get writer's block and that I don't have to outline and things just come. And like sometimes I have plot holes, sometimes things doesn't match. That's where my alpha readers, my beta readers, or my editor comes in. So if something that I miss or something doesn't make sense, or I'm so into it that I don't see the bigger picture, that's why my book goes through so many different groups of people. And I'm like, y'all. I have an editor, so don't edit my document. What I want you to do is the content, the story, the subplots, the character development. Is this character too, sh too shallow? Do I need to go in deeper? That's what my alpha and my beta readers do. Um, and then even when it gets to the launch team, I'm like, y'all, this book has been through the ringer. If you see anything, get it to me by this date. So I can fix it before it goes live. So I know that that's not how everybody goes. So if you're one of those people who do outline and stuff, let me know. How do you do? Does it? So I know how to outline y'all like in college. That's the last time. But it, it's never been one. It's never been something I enjoy doing. I don't like to outline. So even in college, if I can get away from it, I did. I just wrote. I knew generally what needed to go. I guess that is an outline. You start with this, you go with this, this, and then you close, right? And um, even like in my capstone and stuff, there's a general outline. But it's like sites like um, like Dabble does it. And was it Scrivenger does it where it's like you plot the subplot and then the subplot and then the character and then the scene one, two, and then the sub... And I don't do all of that. If I'm writing and then I want to stay with the same general situation, but the scene changes, but like we're still following the same person, that's a scene break. Or if I feel like it's getting too long, it's a scene break. Or she's doing she's doing something and she goes to sleep. Hey, hey y'all, what's up? Live from editing. So I noticed that here, um, as I'm going through this, I'm saying she a lot. And I just want to make a point that the reason I'm saying she is because my books, the main characters are women of color. Like my mission is to bring fiction novels to women of color where they see themselves represented in the main character of the story. Um, I think I mentioned in one of my vlogs that I only have one novella that is the main character is male, and that's only because it's an origin story. So in the Yelena cohort series in book two, I introduce a new love, um, a new love interest for her. And then in the novella, I go into his origin story, and then in a separate novella, I go into hers. Back to our regularly scheduled content. Sleep that night, usually her waking up in the morning is a scene break. If it's the same, if I'm continuing, if she d is doing something completely different, then that's another chapter. That's stuff that just happens. And if it doesn't work or with the vision I have in my head, I didn't accurately put that on the paper. When I sing it, send it through the ringer of all my teams, they say, yo, shot, fix this. That's not okay. And sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Not all of my, um, the, my beta readers and such are of color. Not all of them get... The, the language, the context, not all of them get that. 
So I love their point of view, but my target audience is very specifically, very specific. We talked about that last week. I know exactly who my target audience is. So if somebody is one of my beta readers on my launch team who is not a part of my target audience, and you give me a comment about the the culture in the book, well, it's like, eh, thank you. I appreciate it, but I'm keeping that. If like in my Yelena cohort series, if I'm writing about a different culture than my own, y'all, I hire people for that. Like I have friends, some of them do it for like, some of them do it for free, but I'm like, okay, so if you're in a normal conversation talking to someone, like, where would you, what would you say in English and what would you say in Spanish? Can you write that for me. I don't want to, I don't want to, um, Google translate it because they, that's, that's not how you say it. Like, can you write that for me? So this is the meal that is specific, important to this scene. Is this right? I ask, cause that's not my culture. I don't know. And that's just a part of the different teams that I put in place that I don't, it, that just happens when it, ha as it happens. Like I don't outline for that. So y'all like, let me know, like, how do you outline? Like, what, what does your process look like? Like, let's talk about it. Chapter four, Sister Assassins. Four, plug my project. Plug my project. So I am in the beta reading step beta reading and cover design step of a new book that i just got back from the editor it's called it's called sister assassins vigilante it follows three sisters um three different races they got brought together through foster care we have nia kwan and valentina and they're sister assassins but vigilante style. And so they go through some trauma and then their trauma transforms them so that they find this is how or what I can do to make the world better. How do they do that? I mean, y'all, the title is Sister Assassins Vigilante. Okay. So right now it's going through the beta readers I'm on social media. I'm going to be posting some excerpts so I can get less some comments. Let's get some buzz going. Tell me how you feel. So make sure you're following me. It's going to go on pre-sale through swornauthor.com. It's also going to be on pre-sale through Amazon. Um, I would prefer you pre-sell it through me and not through Amazon. However, I can't ship like Amazon can ship. You got to give me at least three days to get it out. So you can... Do the pre-sale. I'll let you guys know if you want to be a part of my launch team. Send me a message. Send me an email. Any way that you can communicate with me, guys. I don't have a... I'm a self-published author. I don't have a person. It's me. You talk directly to me. So get on social media. Go through my website. Send me a message. Hi, my name is blank. I would love to be on your launch team for your book, Sister Assassin's Vigilante. My email is blank. I'll put you on the list. I will not put you on my newsletter list unless you tell me that that's what you want. You giving me your email puts you on the Sister Vigilante list. The only way that I would use that email other than for stuff about the launch of Sister Vigilante is if I launch a new book I send an email to everyone who has launched books before me in the past and go, hey, I have this book coming up. Here's the synopsis. Would you want to be on my um, this launch team? But you will not go on my newsletter list unless you specifically say that this is also something that I want. Okay? Just like disclaimer. Um, Back to chapter three. Just... Can we talk about real quick? I need you y'all to write in the comments. I need to talk. I need us to talk about how hard writing a synopsis is. I mean, we can write. I write the whole book. Boom. When it gets time for that synopsis, though, like, do y'all hire people? Is there is there a template? I need y'all to help a sister out because um, it's a lot and it's so hard and I change it so many times and like I don't have a, like a developmental editor. I mean, my my regular editor editor can do that but it's like it's i need y'all help but let, let me know how do y'all write your synopsis is it a template or something y'all using can, can we share in this community 
Can you drop some of your nuggets? Let me know in the comments. That's all I have for today, y'all. I'll see y'all next week.